All right, now let's talk about layout a little bit. This is something that I uh, actually very recently discovered. Uh, you know how you can organize your uh, the layout here. So by default, you have the, those, those four um, panels and you can obviously change each of them uh, to you know, whichever you want. Um, you can change the layout to say uh, two side by side. You can do pretty much whatever you want with that. But did you know that um, these, uh, these panels, they don't have to be viewports, they don't have to be cameras, they can be man manual elements. So I have a pretty wide screen, but let's just say you had a, a, a much smaller monitor. Um, I, I usually keep my outliner visible. I've, I've met some animators that uh, just hide it by default. Uh, which you, you, you can do and, and save some space by just clicking on the on the tab here but you can also uh, set one of these panel to be the outliner if you wanted to and not only the outliner so what uh, you would do that by uh, going to uh, panel here and instead of you know uh, choosing a camera you would go to panel and then say for example how uh, outliner this one doesn't exist. Uh, I don't know why it just popped back up. Um, but now I have my uh, two side-by-side -side panels layout by default. One is my camera and one is the, the outliner, which means that, well, let's just say I don't need it to be that wide, but it also means that if I had, a uh, once again, a, a smaller screen, I could just tap space, focus on the animation, the view itself, Tap space again, it will bring the outliner. Um, tapping space is a little bit more practical, I think, than just to manually having to find the, the tab for the outliner and click again. Uh, if you need the, the outliner, you, you, you bring it up by space, you do what you need, and then you hide it. Sorry, clicking on the view, and then you can focus on your animation. Uh, this is for the outliner, but it can be for, I don't know, the pose editor that I never use, or uh, I don't know, maybe the graph editor. Is that the graph editor here? Nope, it's a separate, uh, it's a, yeah, it's a separate um, item, but you could have, oh yeah, the script editor. If you're uh, writing something, you're testing your script, uh, it's good. Okay, now I wanna focus on what's happening on the screen and potentially debug. Let me bring the script again. Um, it can be a uh, useful tip, is it? Just let me know. I was also pretty surprised that the, the basic shortcuts for animation uh, that Motion Builder uh, has by default were not a Maya. But then I realized Maya is not solely a software for animation. Maya just doesn't have it uh, out of the box. So I had to update that as well. And uh, the thing I'm, I'm talking about right now is all those shortcuts I use to, uh, around playback. So st uh, play my animation, pause, go to next frame, go to start, go to end, uh, go to the next key and so on and so on. And what I did was create my hotkeys the way I had my shortcut setup for Motion Builder. So let me bring the, uh, the hotkey editor. So in order to find the, the, the shortcuts we need or the hotkeys we need, uh, you gotta go to uh, menu items and then uh, scroll down to animation and then expand playback here. So all of these are the ones I wanted to share with you today. So, um, and this is by default in Motion Builder to play your animation, I use control space. I mapped uh, control space two for stop, which means it's like it works as a toggle. Uh, so I can play and stop or pause pretty much and then play again and so on. Um, so this is something I don't, you have to click on play uh, if I remember correctly and, and I hated that so I have it mapped. Uh, the next thing um, which is pretty important is uh, same thing, I don't know if it's mapped by default but anyway, when you have, so next frame for me is uh, control right Control left. I don't have keys here set, but if I had, um, I use uh, left arrow, right arrow, and it just moves to the key, uh, not the frame. 
Um, and one thing that I sometimes use as well uh, is control down, so control arrow down, is to play. How is it so so slow? I don't know. But it's to basically play the animation backwards. Sometimes, sometimes I use it uh, just because I, I went past the point and I'm and I'm too and I'm too uh, lazy to just drag the cursor on the timeline. So I just press Control down and Control space to stop the animation right where I want. Uh, and most importantly, the two shortcuts that I had created in Motion Builder 2 that were set on different keys by default is uh, to go to first frame and last frame of your time slider that I might uh, respectively on Control D and Control G. So what's important here is that everything Every single shortcut I just mentioned, I can do with my left hand, so I don't use my other hand. My, my other hand is busy with the mouse, so it doesn't have to come back to the keyboard. Uh, I can manipulate the timeline um, and, and operate on my animation just by using my left hand. So Control D will get me to, let's get this out of the way, to first frame, Control G on the end. And that's something I use a lot. Uh, to make sure that my animations are looping properly. To give you one example, uh, I know Control D is duplicate by default and G is for group. If you need these, I don't quite use uh, that a lot. If I need to group or duplicate something, I would usually go to the menu because I use first frame and last frame way more often than these two. Um, but you know, if you're used to them, Maybe set your uh, first frame and last frame to something else. Maybe Control Shift D and Control Shift G, or use these, uh, the simplest one for animation, which is what you do, uh, and then switch uh, duplicate and group for uh, something like Control Shift D or Control Alt D, whatever floats your boat. While we are at shortcuts. Um, we, I just mentioned something about playback on control space. Um, one thing that, that I noticed in Maya is that if, if you have uh, keys, so let me create something very quickly, some animation, just so we have keys. So if, if, you, uh, if you press playback, regardless of it's, it's from a shortcut or, or the, the button down there, the gizmo disappears while the animation is playing. It's, it, it bothers me because once again, I don't wanna, uh, you guys gonna think I'm, I'm, I'm in motion builder's camp for some things, yes, but um, in that specific case, motion builder, uh, the gizmo sticks, they, they stay visible, which is very useful to um, understand what's happening with your bones or, or controllers at any time in the animation. Maya does not, do that by default. So you have to go frame by frame in order to see what's uh, what's what potentially wrong or what's happening with your animation. And the gizmos are uh, uh, very useful for that. Um, just to let you know that there is a way to do that, which is not the default playback, but that's the interactive playback. You can find that uh, if oh I already switched to FX here, so you would probably be usually in, in animation. But if you switch your, it's not a workspace, is it? I don't know how you guys call that. Um, to FX, you will have a menu called Fields and Solvers, and then Interactive Playback. That's something we use to simulate physics, you know, water, hair, cloth, whatever. Uh, for some reason, this embeds. A visible gizmo so you could use that from time to time because um, it's useful you could also uh, just to prevent you to go to FX and feel and solvers um, you could you could shelve it uh, I don't have the no I don't have the shelf editor so let me uh, bring that up UI and then shelf I have an empty one here so what you can do uh, I don't know about if you know about that shortcut which can be a, a the next trick is just to control, uh, control shift, right click on a uh, an element on menu item, and then it will shelve it. 
Um, so you can just have access to it. If you select it, the gizmo is still there. And if you want it, you could even uh, set a hotkey for that so that it's like a, an alternate way of, um, of, of, of playing your animation. So you would go to your hotkey editor, of course, and then um, let me see if I can remember application com uh, runtime form here. Interactive playback here. And you would say something, I don't know, control shift space maybe. Save and close. So this is traditional playback. Oops. And this is interactive playback. So you can visualize your animations using the visible gizmos and that's that's pretty useful. The next one is something that I found extremely frustrating when I moved from Motion Builder to Maya, uh, is that little gizmo here, thingy, um, to update it from local to global and from global to local. That's not something Maya does, uh, it's not mapped by default on any shortcuts. And I was not okay with this because I was so used to the way Motion Builder handles it um, that I, I, I said to myself, I need to change that. So if I remember correctly, the way you would change it in Maya would be Control Shift, yeah, right click, and then set to Object, move uh, how, how you want, like proceed with what you want to do, and then go back to World because it's better to manipulate that way uh, uh, then, and so on and so forth. I hate having to use menus and extra clicks to do something that simple because I'm also, I've been, I had been working with Motion Builder for years and I was used to it. So I had to uh, take, you know, uh, what I knew and, 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 and take it with me and integrate it in, in my daily uh, workflow. And so what I did was just uh, look up a bit online. Uh, as you know, Maya allows you to uh, write custom scripts and to uh, hotkey them. So I just found online the instructions I needed uh, to switch the gizmo from local to global and vice versa. And I mapped that, uh, I set the, hot, the same hotkeys as for Motion Builder, which is uh, which are F5 for global, F, sorry, F5 for local, F6 for global, because I was used to them. Um, so it's, it's actually pretty simple, it's, it's two lines. So uh, if you go to your hotkey editor, then you can uh, choose custom scripts here. And as you can see, I have these two. And then if, if I click on one, uh, this is, let me make sure that you guys see it. I cannot update the font. I hope that you can see what happens here. I'll, I'll, um, I'll put the, these two comments or the two scripts in the comments so that you can use them if you, if you need to. So two local is um, uh, basically changing the manipulator to both zero for move and rotate. And then F6, it's two for move, one for rotate. Don't ask me why. I didn't do it for scale, but if you wanted, uh, you would just have to find the, uh, the, 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 the instructions for scale and add it to uh, both scripts. 